There is a land to the east of forests and mountains, a spacefaring nation with ancient roots, an emerging economic heavyweight with nuclear weapons. Hi, I'm Chuffley, and this is Chuffley's Countries. Of course, I'm talking about the Republic of India, a place with a fascinating history, a noble people and a rich culture. India has just recently overtaken China as the most populous country in the world. It's home to more than 1.2 billion people. If nothing else, just think about the plumbing involved. And that's if they're lucky enough to have plumbing at all. Some sections of Indian society suffer horrendous poverty. But don't worry, India also has 200 billionaires. So that's all right then. 1.2 billion people is a lot of mouths to feed. Well, I mean, it's 1.2 billion mouths to feed. But thankfully, Indian food is some of the best in the world. Did, did I mention I'm thinking of starting a Cooking with Chuffley channel? I might save my comments about the wide variety and wonder of the many different regional culinary traditions of India for that. And if you subscribe and click all the things, you're sure to be among the first to know when Cooking with Chuffley kicks off. You know, they really like cows in India. Actually, it's Lord Krishna, an important god of Hindu scripture, that really likes cows. So uh, cows are treated as VIPs. VICs. This means that cows are allowed to roam around wherever they please. They saunter onto busy city roads, they sit and chew the cud at intersections and drop bovine waste outside street cafes, all with complete impunity. They are not the only animals you'll see on the roads, of course. Elephants, wild and captive, are plentiful in India, and they're used extensively in forestry and other industries, where they can sometimes suffer terrible cruelty. Several organisations are working to improve the lives of these elephants. Working elephants in the state of Kerala, for example, must now retire at the age of 65 and be provided with food and health care in state forests for the rest of their lives. There are others that fund and provide reflectors to adorn the behinds of road-going elephants in an effort to reduce the number of road accidents involving unseen elephants in the fog. They call them butt reflectors. Butt reflectors. Nice. India has many well-educated, intelligent young people, many of whom happen to speak English. Add to this the vagaries of the developing Indian economy and exchange rates for currencies and you have the perfect storm of skilled technical labour that by Western standards is very affordable. It's offshore outsourcing time. Lots of businesses in the West have saved money by outsourcing many of their functions to India, uh, famously their call centres, but also software development and just about every other digital service. This is why you can call your airline and occasionally encounter a call handler with a perfect command of English grammar and an entirely impenetrable Indian accent. Still, I know only a handful of Gujarati words, for example, and I'm sure my accent is pretty shocking too. India is home to the biggest of the big cats, the breakfast cereal-obsessed orange menace, the tiger. They live in the forests and grasslands and are utterly terrifying. They kill more than 50 people every year. Those moggies are not messing about. I suppose if you're going to be torn limb from limb by a wild apex predator, it might as well be the most mysterious and glamorous of the apex predators. I expect this glamour is why the tiger was chosen as the national animal of India to the disgust of the elephants who thought they had the gig in the bag. And nobody harumphs like an elephant. Music